YouTube, it's Naya Nappy, and I'm back for another Tip Tuesday. Now this week we're gonna be talking about the toxicity found in Kaneklon hair. And recently I saw this video on the internet called Kaneklon hair should be illegal. And in this video here, this woman, she discusses the fact that Kaneklon hair is made up of these two compounds called acrylonitrate and vinyl chloride, and how these two compounds are very toxic. And she says they affect our endocrine system, which is like our breasts, our ovaries, and it can impact our thyroid. So she said a lot of women have thyroid issues. Additionally, she says that these ingredients and compounds can um, seep into our, our system through our skin, which is our largest organ, and through um, inhaling it through our nostrils. And she said these are cancer causing, so we need to stop using them. Now, this kind of caused a little bit of controversy online. I saw on some Facebook groups, and I thought it'd be a great way to address um, what is in Kanekalon hair, and if these ingredients are toxic, is that what the research supports? And so I, I wanted to dive in with this video today. So I went ahead and looked online um, to find a manufacturer of Kaneklon hair to see what they say are the ingredients in the hair. Now I found a website called Kaneklon hair and I'll link that down below for you guys. I'll put a little screen up here. And basically it says that Kaneklon has four types of fibers used to make these products. All right, so there's a moto acrylic fiber, there's a PVC fiber, and then a flame retardant polyester fiber and an organic protein fiber. Now, I choose to focus on the first two in this video, which is gonna be the moto acrylic fiber and the PVC fiber, because these fibers are actually made up of the same two compounds, the acrylonitrile and vinyl chloride for the moto acrylic, and just the vinyl chloride for the PVC. The other two fibers we'll talk about in a video next week for next week's Tip Tuesday. So let's go ahead and dive into what these actual fibers are and whether or not they are toxic for us. All right, so we're first gonna talk about acrylonitrile. Now this is a colorless liquid used to make plastic. And it's interesting to note on the EPA's website that those uh, workers who work in uh, companies that manufacture this fiber actually experience um, dizziness, headaches, nausea, and um, mucos mucosa membrane irritation, so like nose and throat irritation. So you guys, I went a little further and looked into this website that I use all the time to to look up ingredients that I don't know that are in hair and skin products. It's called EWG Skin Deep. And in there, it gives you a toxicity rating or a toxicity score along with the research and why and how this ingredient is toxic or non-toxic, okay? Now, this particular ingredient, acrylonitrile, has a score of seven. And it's seven out of 10, which means it's pretty toxic. If you notice, it is actually red on the screen, which means that is toxic. Now the data behind it says it's robust, which means that there's a lot of information to back up this claim. And all these claims are basically found in research. So on as you scroll up and down this website, you'll see that there's research claims and references at the bottom if you're curious to investigate further. But some of the points that I found um, interesting while reading about this ingredient is that it is a known irritant and it is a human lung and skin toxin and in lab studies with rats mice and rabbits it is shown to have a high acute toxicity from inhalation and high extreme toxicity from oral or dermal exposure no dermal exposure of course is your skin so apparently it can seep in through your skin as we continue to scroll down you'll see that there are studies that show that it, it does cause cancer. And then it says that there's limited evidence of reproductive and developmental toxicity. So just because there's limited evidence doesn't mean that it's bad and like it doesn't affect those things. It just means right now there's not a causal effect of it. And so that more research needs to be provided to further make these uh, claims solid. And finally, to back it all up, if we go right back to the, the EPA's website, it classifies acrylonitrile as a probable, probable human carcinogen. So they classify that in a group, group B1 carcinogen. Okay, so you guys, this one ingredient already has shown me that it is very, very toxic and it's not something that should be put on your hair and skin. It can be absorbed into the skin, into your scalp, and it has very negative implications. So now I wanna move on to vinyl chloride. All right, so I looked up vinyl chloride in the EWG Skin Deep website and they unfortunately didn't have it there, but I Googled it and one of the first websites that came up was cancer.gov, all right? 
And it says this, vinyl chloride is a human carcinogen causing liver cancer, brain cancer, lung cancer, leukemia, lymphoma, and associated with breast cancer. Okay, if that's not enough to make you pause, I don't know what is. So accordingly, the moto acrylic and the PVC types of Coneclon hair are known carcinogens and they have a risk for developing cancers. And so I'm not really willing to take that risk and purchase any Coneclon hair that is made from those particular fibers, you guys. And I advise you guys to do your research when it comes to these things. And in just one more study, you guys, I just thought I should mention this because it's something that back in the day we used to do all the time, which was burn the ends of our hair, right? So you would get your little braids done, your Marley twist done, whatever hairstyle, and you would burn the ends of your hair to help the hair from unraveling up. There was a study shown that those who use flames on these particular types of hairs actually release a volatile gas into their homes, which can trigger asthma, can cause people to become dizzy. And again, we learned that it is toxic because these chemicals are toxic. So you guys, I am going to stop using Coneclon hair that is that contains both the uh, motor acrylic and the PVC fibers. Um, next week we'll learn about the other two fibers located on the website about Coneclon hair that can be made from Coneclon hair and we'll discuss whether they are toxic as well. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll link in the description section um, the articles that I looked up to, to research this information and my blog post that will go into further detail, give you further information if you're looking to learn more about Coneclon hair. And don't forget, I know last week we talked about skincare, my skincare routine, and I promise you guys a DIY moisturizing face cream because a lot of you guys are like me and you're trying to avoid purchasing products made by these larger companies who may or may not report the toxic chemicals in them. So stay tuned for later in this week. I'll be posting that video probably on Friday or Saturday. But if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know for sure because I always post a clip on my Instagram page. That's now I am nappy. And I'll link that up top and down below for you guys. So that's it. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get the next part of this video for next week. And again, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And that's it for this week's Tip Tuesday. I'll see you next time. Bye.